Good evening and welcome. Uh, our Monday and Holy Week service is being done from the rectory today. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But we have, if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and endured, and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first lesson is a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth, and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Here ends the lesson. Our psalm is a portion of Psalm 36, 36, verses 5 through 11. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens, and your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the strong mountains, your justice like the great deep. You save both man and beast, O Lord. How priceless is your love, O Lord! Your people take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They feast upon the abundance of your house. You give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the well of life, and in your light we see light. Continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your favor to those who are true of heart. Let not the foot of the proud come near me, nor the hand of the wicked push me aside. Our second lesson is a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. When Christ came as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and perfect tent, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy place, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls, with a sprinkling of the ashes of a heifer, sanctifies those who have been defiled so that their flesh is purified, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to worship the living God. For this reason, he is the mediator of a new covenant, so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance, because a death has occurred that redeems them from the transgressions under the first covenant. Here ends the lesson. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Six days 
Before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for three hundred denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, Let her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. Then the great crowd of the Jews learned that he was there. They came not only because of Jesus, but to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priest planned to put Lazarus to death as well, since it was on account of him that many of the Jews were deserting and were believing in Jesus. Here ends a lesson. God knows our suffering. That's what our prayer is about, our collect at the beginning of the service. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Jesus wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. He knew what it was like to mourn the loss of a dear one. He saw the grief of Lazarus' sisters how they mourned, and he knew the worst of suffering and pain. Jesus knew the worst it could be. One of his closest friends betrayed him and handed him over to those in power. He was beaten and humiliated. He was made to bear a physical burden that he collapsed under. He was made to undergo the worst torture. He died a horrible, unbelievably cruel death. He knew the worst of suffering. What in God's name does God expect us to be learning from that? That God intimately understands our suffering. Everyone's suffering is different. Just as individual as the person. Physical, mental, emotional, sickness, hunger, thirst, being humiliated, embarrassed, betrayed, ignored, forgotten. Any of our suffering, God knows it. God understands it. God has suffered too. When we are beset with suffering, we are walking the way of the cross with Jesus, and he is walking it with us. We believe that God in Christ is with us every step walking alongside us, supporting us all the way, even when we aren't even aware of it. And just as we already know that the end of the story is not Good Friday, but Easter, so we know that resurrection is on the other side of the cross. We may not at all know what the other side of our suffering is or will be, but because we have the promise of the resurrection through our Lord, we know that wherever suffering is, the promise of new life follows. Let us now affirm our faith using the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world. For Michael, our presiding bishop. Lawrence, Geraldine, Daniel, and Bill, our bishops. For your humble servant, the rector of Christ Church. For this gathering and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. We pray for Ukraine. We pray for all those who are suffering in Ukraine. We pray for the leadership. We pray for the leadership of the nations that they may find a way to stop the madness and support Ukraine in a way that does not escalate war. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the needy, the hungry, the oppressed, those in prison, those in any need or trouble. We remember all those on our parish prayer list, offering prayers for healing, comfort, and strength, particularly remembering today Bill D. Robert C. and Bob N. and Marilyn. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find and be found by God. I ask your prayers to the departed, especially Richard Janus, brother of Christine Janus, and Jim Fredholm, father of Kristen Octera. And for the almost one million people who have died in this country of COVID, pray for those who have died. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Lord, hear the prayers of your people, and what we have asked faithfully grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us pray the prayer our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. We will hold a service at 7 o'clock each night during Holy Week. I hope that you can join us every each night. The Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday uh, is a simple service of what's called Ante 
communion, which is before communion. So it's just the part of the service before communion, and it will be online. Maundy Thursday will be in person at the church as well as live streamed, and it's at 7 p.m. And then the Good Friday service is at 7 p.m. also, and it is uh, in person and also will be live streamed. There's also the Holy Saturday service, which is a, a short little service uh, that is uh, an, a really good good way to continue the your devotions over the full over the, the fullness of the Triduum. So I hope that you can join us for that. That's at nine a.m. on Saturday morning. And then immediately following that, then our altar guild begins to uh, beautify the church and get it ready for our Easter celebration on Sunday. Sunday is in person at 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. The 10 a.m. is also live streamed. And following the 10 a.m. service, we have an 1130 um, Easter egg hunt for the children. So I hope that you can join us for all of these services over Holy Week and Easter. God bless. God bless. And have a blessed Holy Week and a good evening tonight. Bye-bye.